What's up guys? Hola! Bienvenido de nuevo al cinema gringo. Today we have a special, another special video. We're gonna watch Elite Squad 2, Tropa de Elite 2. Oh, yeah. Vocês pediram, vocês deixaram um monte de comentários pedindo para a gente assistir esse filme. Então hoje nós vamos assistir o filme e falar o que a gente acha do, do filme. And we're gonna do it a little bit differently this time. We're going to actually record ourselves while we're watching the movie. Ah. So that we, you guys can see our initial reactions to all the scenes. So yeah, yeah, which I think is good because there were some moments in the last one where we were just like, where I was at least, just yeah, yeah shocked. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's go. Mas o buraco de saída do tamanho de uma tangerina. Beirada, leva um tiro na testa. A equipe entrou em menos de um minuto. So, my first impression is that it grabs your attention exactly like the first one did too. Uh, yeah, I, I already wrote the same thing down. Yeah. Like the, the, the storytelling piece where it has the the hook, you know, to really... Right from the beginning. Yeah, and I'm definitely hooked and I, I'm in shock, like, ah! Yeah. Yeah, I can't, yeah. Yeah, I, it's I just can't great. even talk. And it are, within like the first 10 or 15 minutes, we already have like, it, you know, it already shows the involvement of the, the governor, the politicians, it already shows the involvement of the BAPI, which is the... Yeah, the, the elite, police force. The elite squad. Yeah. The elite squad, yeah. And then the, the gangs, but not in the favelas within the jail. And right. how there's different levels there. There's right. layers, there's layers everywhere. Yeah. You know. And how like the guard, one of the guards was involved and brought the guns to the Red Command to start all of this. Yeah. And then the other guard was just like, oh yeah, here we go again. Like they're, the Red Command is, is making their move. Bring me some more bread, because this bread is, it's like just another day. It's like ruthlessness, so like how they killed everyone and like the fact that this guy would, the security guard would let this happen, it's, but underneath it is desperation. Yeah. You know, like these people are having to do this because it's their only way to survive, you know, at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. And there's that layer of desperation behind everything. Yeah. And you like feel it and it's it's just saddening and it's... Yeah. It is. And, and the other thing too is like, with this movie and the other, the first movie, you kind of see how how life is so undervalued, you know, in these communities, and that's that's another sad aspect of that the film shows. The, the other thing too is that this human rights guy, he was giving like he was giving a speech to like the, the middle class white population in Brazil, and they're all like laughing and having a good time, and he's joking about it at the same time that what's going on in the prison is going on. So it also kind of shows you like that juxtaposition of the, the white middle class and then also the yeah what, no what, and, and again on. you see all the all the different socioeconomic classes being affected by yeah. this and just yeah. like tying in and it's well that was a crazy start to the movie so we're gonna keep going yeah see you guys in a little bit mas casar com ele foi sacanagem o cara vivia enchendo a cabeça do meu filho de merda surpresa boa Tu tava falando a verdade, Me respeite, me respeite. baixa o tom pra falar comigo. Não vê você me falar em defender o batalhão. <coughs> Alright, so... I saw you taking a bunch of notes. We've watched another, like, 25 minutes of the video. Now we're kind of seeing that the Bopi, they tried to weed out the bad cops and, like, stop the inflow of money to them. But it yeah. just kind of changed how they took advantage of the favelas in the end. Yeah, I thought about this this analogy or this this metaphor that I've heard and this is it's these issues are so common in, in the states too so like it just reminds me of it but it's using like a crack in the wall and rather than using cement to like fill it back in they're putting band-aids on it mm -hmm. and and that's it's a temporary fix and so maybe for a second it's like oh yeah it's working out but big picture those same issues are gonna come back and the system's still messed up from from the foundation so yeah yeah and the other thing like that i thought was kind of interesting was after the thing in the prison government wanted captain nacimento to get kicked out but then like he walked into the restaurant and everybody started cheering for him and then the governor the government kind of realized oh wait they're they're actually behind what he's doing and then so that also kind of complicated things and so he got put in a different position that allowed him to kind of go after 
the drug dealers in the favelas more aggressively, which led to the cops having to find a different way to take advantage of it. So it's all, like we've been talking about throughout watching these movies, this, you know, the first Tropa Giulici and City of God, like it's all a cycle of just people trying to get by and make make money off of other people and yeah you know. yeah and then within yeah. 30 seconds the whole the whole thought process dynamic shifted and it's almost like based on popularity what's going to be the most popular decision versus what's going to be the best decision yeah and the best decision tends to have blowback and and hard things and and maybe not everyone is happy yeah. but it's hard to follow through on those right. things. Uh, on a side <laughs> note, Fraga is like super ruthless going and marrying Nacionamento's ex-wife. That's something I didn't expect. Yeah, that, that tosses in a whole... A whole nother... It fucks it up even more. I feel like Nacimiento represents the like ruthless, like, you know, get in there attack verse like and they call him Che Guevara they call him Che Guevara right, too yeah. at, at some point through. Nacimiento so, called him che, he's like oh Che Guevara's here <laughs> yeah so that guy is like the thought leader so it's like thoughts versus action yeah. like what is it and it's somewhere in between both of them yeah all right crazy. we're gonna get back to watching the movie we'll see you guys in a little bit So, <laughs> yeah, so you kind of so, yeah, yeah. saw that coming, yeah. right? Or as soon as Andre like figured out that the drug dealer didn't know, or like he didn't really figure it out yet, but he knew he kind of picked up that something was was going on. It's just so sad because from the very beginning he had the best intentions. Yeah, and so I I kind of knew that something was going to happen as soon as he got involved with this sketchy yeah, plan, yeah. you know? He just wanted to be back in Bolte so much. The, that any his, opportunity. Yeah, his take. judgment was super clouded. Yeah. Well, and I think Captain Nacionamento knew it too. As soon as he saw Andre was back in the Bopi, he's like, oh shit, something happened because he shouldn't have been back in there. And, but now now it's like, oh, oh crap, what's going to happen with, because now Captain Nacionamento is going to know something is up with Hosha and the these guys that and he's gonna shot. he's gonna connect it to the militia guys who robbed the the police station for yeah. the guns ah yeah this it's is it's intense it's intense vamos assistir até o final vamos ver vocês no final We just finished the movie, and exactly kind of how we thought it would end, Captain Nacionamento figures out that the militia was connected to Andre's death, to the police station, like robbing and taking of the guns and everything. And then it goes into the to his testimony, he gets attacked, his son almost dies. He decided to kind of fight in a different way at the end. Yeah, yeah. it's just, it's a lot, a lot happened. It's, uh, my first kind of impressions of the, the movie itself, like it's just the storytelling again is just incredible. I think um, the acting in it is really, really good also. And then you end up learning so much about, you know, the system. And I know it's not exactly a true story, but it's based off of a lot of, uh, a lot of events that have happened before with politics in Brazil. And it just gives you this film in particular more than the first one gives you a bigger picture of the problem than just the drug dealers in the favelas against the police and the military force. Like my, I, I don't even know, I, like I'm so at a loss of words because I just feel like I learned so much and you feel the pain from so many different sides. You see the harsh realities behind everything and how everything is interconnected and at the very end it, it says how the system it is so comprehensive and there's so many pieces yeah. from the top to the bottom. I'm just really moved by by this movie. The first one was on a whole nother level, but then this one really ties together and you see kind of the bigger picture. It's a great, great film. I mean, like at on, the end of the day. And you would think that my favorite movie would be like an American movie, but that seriously could be 
one of my favorite movies that I've wow. ever seen. Um, because I think the the point of a movie is to, to move you, not only to entertain you, but to actually have a message. There's so many things that are so reflective with like issues in America too. And like, that's why it just like is even more powerful for me not to be here. But like, I feel like I understand. That movie was so powerful. Like I got my glaze in my eyes, as I say, cause it, it really did move me. And so I, I do want to first say like, that was seriously one of the best movies I've ever seen. Yeah. I like that one um, as, a, as a film better than the first one for sure. I think it's just an overall better better movie. Not the first one is a great movie too, but this one, I don't know. I feel like this one was kind of on a different level than that one. I don't know if it's my favorite Brazilian movie yet, but it's definitely up there. Tá bom, gente. Uh, isso foi nossas reações do do filme. Uh, como eu falei, se vocês têm mais filmes para indicar para a gente assistir, podem deixar aqui nos comentários. Sharad, thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Tchau, tchau, gente. Tchau.